Hi there, it's Jan from Folk Roots Radio. It's great to be here again for another Folk Roots Radio Live. I think this is the fourth or fifth one we've done. We're still ironing out the creases in this new enterprise for Folk Roots Radio, but I'm having a lot of fun doing it. And I know I've mentioned before that it's just like being on the radio live, which I don't get to do because I'm in my home studio here in Leamington. So I'm not able to do that, but it's actually really fun to be able to, to do my interviews this way. It means that you're like in the studio with me. You can listen in as I talk to my guests. Now, coming up today, I'm really excited about this because I'm going to be talking to Regina Saskatchewan singer-songwriter Jeffrey Straker. He is a really fun live performer with an energetic piano style and songwriting that has been compared to the likes of Harry Chapin, Chris Christopherson, and Carole King. And it really is a great songwriter. Uh, we've become real fans of his music over the, the last year. In fact, I think I've pretty much played everything that he's sent me um, since he landed on our radar. So it's going to be great to, to talk to him today. We're going to start off with his latest single. It is entitled Play That Song Again. And it's from his new album, which will be uh, just before sunrise. That will be coming out in May. So uh, really looking forward to being able to talk to Jeffrey today. And I really appreciate you being with me. So thanks for joining me. And here he is, Jeffrey Straker with Play That Song Again on Folk Roots Radio. Every now and then I look at your picture in a frame You're the one I got drunk on And kept drinking anyway You turned on my senses Like some old radio Tuned me You helped me let them go Held on for all I was worth And I let go again I've tried to remember and I've tried to forget You left me lost in my own body From my head down to my toes Play that song again Show me how it goes You took me prisoner and left me on death row with a voice in my head saying, I told you so. And I'm in my mother's arms, and I'm great no more. Play that song again, show me how it goes. Yeah, play that song again, show me how it goes. heavens while digging a grave I filled it with pieces of promises I made Oh no man crying or crying out loud fought with myself but I stood my ground I thought about making a change and starting all brand new I moved the furniture round and round in my living room Oh, how to mend the broken No one gonna know Play that song again Show me how it goes I can still hear your voice in the aching of me Dancing round and round in the honesty 
I remember the music, the first time so soft and slow. Play that song again. Show me how it goes. Yeah, play that song again. Show me how it goes. Yeah, yeah, play that song again. Show me how it goes. That is Jeffrey Straker from Regina in Saskatchewan with his latest single. It's entitled Play That Song Again. It's absolutely fabulous. I, I got to say, I, I really do love his music. Now, Jeffrey is a classically trained pianist as well as a singer-songwriter. He'll be releasing his latest album. It's entitled Just Before Sunrise. That arrives in early May, and it was written in the written and recorded in the wake of the sudden loss of his mother, and it's an album that speaks to a life long need to dream, to belong, and to matter. And it is a really beautiful album. I can't talk highly enough about his music. It's a great album, and it's my great pleasure to welcome to Folk Roots Radio today, Jeffrey Straker. It's great to have you join us. It's great to be on your show, Jan. I'm, I'm delighted. Well, I got to say, I'm a real sucker for piano-driven singer-songwriters. I love Harry Chapin. Uh, Billy Joel, big fan, way back before anyone else really liked him. I always that's one of the names of fame. Um, also, Clifford T. Ward from the UK, who sadly left us uh, a while ago. I don't know if you're familiar to, with his music, but uh, he has that personal flavor as well that your music has, although he sings definitely with a different style. So, Oh, wonderful. I, I Well, I'm obviously, a, uh, I, I've been greatly influenced by a lot of the singer, pianist, people as well. And the piano is sort of, it's a less common one to be accompanying a singer songwriter these days. So, um, so I'm glad you ha have an ear for it. That's wonderful. Oh yeah. No, I, you know, I, I think that's the thing is that there is always something really warm with, about music like this, you know, that that's what really gets me. Um, you know, th this album specifically was, was written after the, the sad passing of your mother and uh, mm -hmm. very sorry to, to, to hear about that. Um, you know, it's it's one of the things about music, though. It's often the sad things in life that inspire us. And um, did you really find that 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 encouraged you to to get into writing again, to 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 really start working on a new project? Yeah, it's it's the funniest thing because it, you know it did, um, and it was like uh, it was like there was stuff in me that just needed to come out, which was actually a different sort of feeling as a writer than I've ever had before. Like, of course, of course, ideas can have come out of me before, but this stuff, it's almost like it was part of my therapy of dealing with the passing of mom. And, you know, and, and this is just over two years ago now. And it's like, this stuff had to come out in order to make room for anything else to come out. Like, like there was, there was no, I couldn't set it aside. I didn't have to make time for it. It was like, this is coming out now. And so it was a it was a different writing process for me, like when you when you dial it back to how the album was written. And at the same time, as a result, I really do think some of these songs are some of the ones that I'm the proudest of so far. Um, so it is interesting that, you know, it came from this slightly different place. I also got a slightly different result. Like it, the, the creative process is so mysterious. Well, it's interesting you say that because, you know, what, one of the things I've loved since I first heard your music and, you know, and I was looking back at your disc discography and it's like, whoa, I think there's 10 albums there or something like that. And, you know, when somebody first lands on your radar and you, you know, they were they're new to you, it's sort of like, wow, what a pleasant surprise. But I, I think that you have a beautiful balance between the piano and your voice. I mean, you know, one of the things that really comes through just on that first song we played you know that play that song again is there's a real connection um i guess you must get that every time you sit in front of the piano do you 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 know we, people always talk about getting into the zone you know whether you're a sportsman or a musician yeah um, you get a, a lot of that when you sit down i we're going to play a, a live video that you recorded at 
uh, home a little later. And I, I was just watching when you started that one and another one that I checked out on your website, which is uh. jeffstraker.com. But I'm just I'm curious as to whether uh, you really do get that feel when you you get, you know, sit down at the piano. I know it, you're you're a great observer. I I really do, and it's funny because I can I can think about you know sitting down to play a song or something because my my piano right here is in, is kind of in the middle of my house and I pass it all the time and I can think about certain points in the day I'll, I'll be like oh I would like to sit down and just play a song and I'll do that, but once I get there, once I sit at that thing and get playing it, I it is literally impossible for me to play just one. I like I just kind of keep going and on my last live stream I did. I mentioned to the viewers, I said, you know, it's almost like a drug, <laughs> like, like I get started and I almost can't stop. And it, and, but what you observed is actually really astute. Like it, there's this funny connection that happens and it's, I guess it comes from having played it for so many years. And I also love this particular piano, but yeah, it, it's, um, it sort of sucks me into this zone. And, and I do find that, um, you know, that, that, that the piano isn't hopefully just accompaniment as an afterthought the piano is sort of part of these songs you know yeah so let, let's turn the clock back because i you grew up um i was going to say as old people in saskatchewan do on a on a grain farm <laughs> <laughs> obviously that's not quite true for my friends living in saskatoon but um you you grew up on a on a farm your mother i think was a church organist yeah farm, mom played, an yep. auctioneer mm -hmm. um and i think there was what a lot of country music in the house when you were growing up a lot of country music, and there's a lot, a lot, a lot of like particularly old time country music, like the old Hank Snow stuff, and older than that, like the old sort of country folk songs, you know, um, the Happy Wanderer, and you know, You Are My Sunshine, and all these sort of you know songs. But you know, neighbors would bring their instruments, and there'd be these jam sessions of these old country songs. Yeah. So, um, did your father play as well? I mean, you know, what was was his interest really in? Um, he did he did play he uh he was a five-string banjo player and so mom played piano and 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 learned fiddle later in her life too but um dad was played the five-string banjo my grandma played guitar my my grandpa my dad's dad was a, a quite a good fiddler you know, and so everyone sort of played something. My sister always sang harmony. Um, and then the various and sundry neighbors would bring over various instruments. We had this one neighbor who was like a black belt ninja accordion player. Like he was so good. And so these music sessions would just go, you know, go till four in the morning. Like it was it was such a part of my growing up. Well, you know, and that creates just such a, a wonderful image. Obviously, you're not old enough to have been growing up in the 50s, but it kind of has <laughs> that, that old radio feel, which is, is just is just really beautiful. Uh, you talk about the, the fact that you felt like that, you know, you, you really grew up under the piano. Um, mm -hmm. You started playing pretty early, didn't you? I well, I started my piano lessons when I was uh, six, and my mom put my, my older brother, myself, the middle kid and my younger sister all into piano lessons at that age because she wanted us to all have a kick at that proverbial can. Uh, my brother just didn't really like it. He, um, you know, he just liked other things. And uh, uh, and I was this really kind of piano nerd and I loved to practice and I really wanted to impress my teacher, Mrs. Young. And so I, 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 I was a practicer from the get go. You know, I, I practiced for half an hour when I was eight years old. It was very kind of odd, but I really loved it. Yeah. And then you, you, you actually progressed pretty rapidly. I mean, Believe it or not, I actually started on the piano too, but in my case, it never took. <laughs> but radio <laughs> took, and actually spoken word took, but not so much the the musical side of things. But you actually, um, you you got through your uh, exams pretty rapidly. I mean, you you were a student at the Royal Conservatory of Music. Uh, you got a diploma in performance from Trinity College London. I think you were just 19 then. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then I, I guess you, did you start mainly playing with, um, you know, more classical work at that point? And when did the singer song, songwriter thing start? That's a, it's a, it's a great question. So yeah, all, all that study till I was 19, uh, the, the, the formal studies, that was all classical piano. And by the time I was 19 and did that big diploma with Trinity College in London, I played a full concerto and full sonatas and two preludes and fugues by Bach. And like it was really intense. But during my grade 10, 11, and 12, I discovered the sheet, some sheet music of Elton John. And that kind of changed, you know, sort of the game. Um, and there was this weird realization for me that, like, you know, 
growing up on a, on a grain farm in, in Saskatchewan in the 80s and 90s, like this seems weird, but the idea that I could be a songwriter was not a thing. Other people wrote songs, you know, and so it took me a while to get it into my head. But those times were different and things weren't Googleable. So I had to sort of realize, oh, it's not just these super duper famous people who make songs like anyone can make a song. So it, it took a while to get that into me. So really in university and the years just after that, I, I sort of really started mucking around making my own songs. But it, I was a late starter in the songwriting part of it. You know, my my my, my real beginnings were like piano chops so I, I imagine you probably started to play people like elton no did you i mean you were... oh yeah elton john and billy joel and carol king and and uh you know um like jo there's a lot of Joni mitchell songs arranged for piano and gordon lightfoot and neil young i had all that music and i was playing all those songs and so the thing was those songs always really were the ones that really resonated with me like i was never really the one to like the, you know no, no offense to him, but like David Foster stuff or any sort of contemporary pop stuff on the piano never really appealed to me as much. But the old Elton stuff and then the old folky stuff like that, it, and it was those story songs accompanied by piano that I just loved. You know, I was like, well, this stuff is great. And it seems to be where I've landed. So it's funny. Yeah. Well, you know, you certainly, um, I got to say, very engaging as an interview guest as well <laughs> as a singer songwriter. Uh, we're going to get back to the album in a few moments, but I, I do want to talk uh, about a couple of songs. The one we started off with, Play That Song Again, because um, is that a bit of a love song? It seems like it's written about somebody. Um, well, it's it's a good it's a good question, Jen. You're 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 obviously a much more of a listener than most. So, so here's the deal: it is it's not a love song. It's a song reflecting back on love either for a person or a thing uh, that has that that love is gone and but exactly. but the, the, but the, but the song hopefully allows the listener the idea that you 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 have permission to look back on something even though it might not have turned out how you wanted it to but like that's life and we can look back on those things and be happy with things not working out you know, and 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 you know, it, it's it's kind of that. Like, there's a lot in that song that is kind of heavy, and maybe not. Like, you you can realize, wow, this listener or this this singer maybe did, isn't looking back on the best of times. But by the end of the song, they're saying, "Play that song again," because they're looking back with the ability to be like, "That's part of my fabric." You know, right. that's so that's kind of what I tried to do. Yeah, yeah. No, it it works really really well. Now we're gonna go ahead and play one of my favorite tracks from the new album that is light of fire we're actually going to play a track of you playing your own piano which has an absolutely beautiful sound to it i call her uh, i call her moira has, rose moira oh moira rose i guess she has quite a history as well does she 1910 Heinzmann upright piano built in Toronto uh, in the junction back in the day and apparently came to Saskatchewan after being bought out of the Eaton's catalog on the train and is now sitting over 110 years later in my living room. Yeah, it's a beautiful piano. It sounds great. We're going to play the video very shortly. Light a fire. I just love because it it there's a lot of optimism and hope in this song and uh, since the pandemic started, I've been doing a lot of shows based around uh, a COVID times theme because a lot of people have been writing some really great songs that we call COVID tunes. You know, typically <laughs> they're singles that mm -hmm. come out that have, uh, you know, often an optimistic theme. Maybe they're, you know, um, you know, raising support for essential workers, for the healthcare workers that have been keeping us all safe. Lots of things like that. But mm -hmm. Light of Fire, it, it's got this fabulous uh, feel to it. I mean, when I listen to this song, it makes me want to get up and go and do something valuable. Um, yeah. <laughs> tell great. us about the writing of it. Well, so Light of Fire is one of two songs on the record that was a co-write. And this one was a co-write with a fella that some of your listeners and viewers might know. His name is Royal Wood. And um, we co-wrote this. Um, it fell out of us in about an hour and a half. Like this was a fast thing and, and I remember like I literally went went to Royal's place and I said I really want a song about fire <laughs> that's what I said and then we but then we got talking about fire you know ping-ponging the ideas and this idea about fire sort of being a symbol of change and burning things down or you know in order to let them 
be come up Brilliant. again, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and the idea, so the song is really about making a positive change in yourself to hopefully then make a positive change in your community. And it hopefully uses that metaphor to, you know, light you up, if you will. And it's got a great response. Like, I get emails from people in, in the oddest of places saying, just heard this song. And, you know, it's, it's, it's really nice. So I think people are finding that message that we hoped they would. Yeah, no, definitely. And, uh, you know, I obviously want to put a shout out to, to Royal Wood, fabulous performer as well. Mm -hmm. uh, interestingly, it, uh, a lot of his work is also piano driven, uh -huh. uh, you know, and, I have wonderful memories of the first time I saw him play at the Hillside Festival. I think it was 2005, 2006 time. And he was just, I was just beautiful. And, and I hear that in your music. I mean, I, I mentioned earlier, I'm a real sucker for piano driven singer songwriters. I think the world needs more of them, not less. <laughs> well, thank uh, you. Jeffrey, Jeffrey Straker, it's, absolute, it's an absolute pleasure talking to you today. Let's listen to that just now. This is Jeffrey Straker with Light a Fire live at his piano, Moira Rose, at home in Regina, Saskatchewan. We'll just share that with you now. This is a song of mine called Light of Fire. Bags are packed, some regrets. I'm gonna wick around inside my head, but I ain't gonna be a headline in yesterday's news. The heart can whisper it has to choose. I'm gonna make a change, I'm gonna light a fire, I'm gonna sing it on out like a preacher to the choir. Gonna start with a spark, let the flames burn higher. Whoa, 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 I'm gonna light a fire. Mm -hmm. This boat may sink, but I don't mind. If fear is a shadow, but hope is the light. As long as I got hair inside of my lungs, I've been looking for the answer. If I already won, I'm gonna make a change, gonna light a fire. I'm gonna sing it on out like a preacher to the choir. I'm gonna start with a spark, let the flames burn higher. Oh, I'm gonna light a fire. Then I keep holding on. Why I'm letting go? It's all I need to know. Oh, oh, oh I'm gonna light a fire. Counting treasures when we're old Won't be just coins of silver and gold It's the riches of our stories that fill up our souls I've been looking for the answer I finally know I'm gonna make a change, I'm gonna light a fire I'm gonna sing it on out like a preacher to the choir. I'm gonna start with a spark, let the flames burn higher. Whoa, whoa, whoa I'm gonna light a fire. Yeah, I'm gonna light a fire. Let's light a fire. 
and also an audio test to see if this new uh, microphone setup is working. I'll pop back on in the coming days and do a few more lives as I uh, get this thing working just right. But this is the first try. I hope it works okay. Have a great afternoon. That was great. I really love that guy. <laughs> you, you know, th those live streams are really engaging. Uh, we're going to talk about live performance just now. Uh, this is Folk Roots Radio. I'm Jan Hall. Oh, kind of just have to... Stop the next one. How did that happen? <laughs> a little teaser for later. Yeah. I thought I had YouTube working perfectly, but not quite. But huh. Jeffrey Strake is our special guest on Folk Roots Radio today. That was Light of Fire from his new album, Just Before Sunrise. That drops on May the 7th. And you picked a perfect title because I'm a really early person, early morning person. I actually get up at between 4.30 and 5 every day. I like, to be, I like to be out before dawn. So uh, I, I, it's my favorite time of day. You know, I see the same four people every day because we're all crazy. <laughs> but it, it's just beautiful. So it was great that you picked that title for the album. But tell us about these live streams because um, – the, can people get them through your website and social media? Is that how you normally do them? Yeah, well, so, I mean, there are live streams that I've done that obviously remain posted on the pages where I do them. And I do them from either my Facebook page or my YouTube page. So people can go there and see some of the past ones I do. I tend to do more on my Facebook page um, just because there's a bigger audience built up there. And so I can, you know, do one even unannounced and and, and it'll get a, a nice response. And so I, I, when, when COVID first hit us, I quickly sort of, I hate the word, but I pivoted, you know, and, and went over to uh, Facebook and started doing these live streams. And I did them once a month. And uh, one of the first ones was with the National Arts Center. And uh, that kind of spurred me to do more. And and I, I have to give a big shout out to all my Facebook page followers and fans and supporters and listeners, because I put a donate button on some of those live streams. And the donations were very generous. And people literally, like, financially saved me and I, and I and I and a lot of people sort of tiptoe around this topic and I don't like without those generous donations like I wouldn't have been able to pay my bills it, it was wonderful and I'm very indebted and I mean so so live streams were were and they they actually helped me grow my audience um as well so uh so you know so I do more of them every now and then um and and, I, and I've really liked them it was a recent one where I finally started to feel normal with no applause after the songs you know you're singing into your camera um so it's, for better or for worse that started to feel normal so I don't know if that's good or bad I know I know that's what people do say when they're you know, when they're doing the live streaming, the lack of an audience does make a difference. But I guess as you get used to it, mm -hmm. uh, things become a little easier. Let's talk about live performance. Um, mm -hmm. You've got some virtual shows coming up. We'll talk about them in a few moments. But, um, you know, give us an idea of the typical Jeffrey Straker live show. I mean, I'll, you know, mostly solo. Uh, we're going to play the fabulous morning light and a a uh, few seconds where you do have someone accompanying you but we, what mm -hmm. how how do you normally typically set up i'm typically i'm doing most of my shows as a duo these days i mean so, solo if they're live streams but my live shows i do as a duo and it's, it's me on my piano and vocals um i do one, one or two songs on a ukulele but mostly piano and singing and my accompanying person has either been a double bass player or an acoustic guitar player. And I just do that so that, so I bring an extra little bit of texture to add to the arrangement. And I find that it just sort of adds this extra level of depth um, for both the audience and myself, you know, to, to keep me, there's something about being able to play off that other musician that I just absolutely love. So to me, and to, and to me, uh, given that I mentioned before, the my songs are kind of story driven songs in that folk tradition that I, I, I like the story to shine through. So I don't feel like I need a full band around me all the time. If I do a special show that, that you know, I can, I'll maybe bring in a full band, but I'm very comfortable presenting my music as a duo or solo. Yeah, no, I, I can see that. Well, I, I got to say that I just love the sound of the piano. I mean, I was, <laughs> I'm somebody with a bit of a bias that way. <laughs> uh, that is just really wonderful. So the album itself uh, drops on May the 7th. Yeah. Um, you have some, I think, shows pl uh, planned to uh, support it. Tell, a little, tell us a little bit about what you're going to be doing. 
Yeah. So given the pandemic, I, I, every time uh, I, I wanted to do a tour as you would anytime you, you launch a record. And so I am doing a tour, but it's a virtual tour. And what I did is there's six, sh six shows I wanted to do kind of going across the country, if you will. And each one partners with a different presenting partner or venue. So the whole thing kicks off April 30th partnering with my great friends at the Calgary Folk Club. And they're presenting that one to their audience as well as you know anybody else who wants to buy a ticket to it. And then we progressed from there you know, uh, through, through several dates, um, doing shows that span the country. Um, you know, the Maritimes edition is probably the most unique one in that it's being co-presented by a collective of uh, different house concert hosts that I've, that I've played at, where they're all sort of you know, presenting it out to their uh, regular subscribers and anybody in the Maritimes, you know, but of course, anybody anywhere in the country can get tickets to any one of these dates. But, you know, we wanted to sort of present it as a, as a cross country tour to try to retain some of that feel or thing, thing you do in a regular time with a new album. So I'm excited about it. Yeah, I know. Well, I, I can see that, you know, I, again, we, we talked about the fact that, you know, the pandemic has upended everything, but you really are trying to embrace the, the situation you're in. The album is being released mm -hmm. and, you're making as much of an opportunity as possible to expose people to some great music because it, it truly is. So, so that is wonderful. I think you're also hoping that maybe later in the year, you might actually get to play some real dates. Yeah. And so, um, uh, and I, and I, and uh, I, I do hope that actually starting in June through to September, I'll be able to play my backyard series, which I started last year, which, you know, I, I did one backyard concert in Saskatoon last July and put a picture on my Facebook page. And then someone saw it and said, I want to do one of those. And then it bloomed into this thing called my pandemic piano backyard tour. And there were 36 shows um, this summer so far. God bless my fans. I've already booked 41 of these things. Um, and th they're in backyards right from the Okanagan to Ontario. Now, of course, that's all supposing that COVID is going to let us travel. But all these people are leaning forward and crossing their fingers and you know, have held the date. And we're hoping this can happen. So you know, we'll see. But if we can, I've got a 40-day summer tour. So I'm pretty excited. Yeah, I, I can see. No, it sounds like it's going to be absolutely wonderful. Um if you ever get this way, and as I say, things settle, we have a beautiful backyard. We would ah. bring, you know, bring the piano, and we will play. I think that would be that would be lots of fun. That'd be cool, actually. Now, I did check out a wonderful video of you playing with the Regina Symphony Orchestra. I yeah. think the, the song "Gravity." I'm not sure what album that was on, but do you do do you still do a, a bit of playing with orchestras? You know, I. Uh, uh, I guess a bit is the proper um, quantifier. I mean, I, those shows aren't uh, frequent, but they're very special when they do happen. And it seems to be every couple of years I get to do one or two. Um, I, that was my, I think, third concert with the full Regina Symphony Orchestra since I did my first one in 2011. And, uh, you know, of course, they can't have you back too often because it loses its luster. But they are, they've been great enough to have me back enough, you know. And we did that show with an orchestra, the one you saw, in a cathedral in Regina, in October of the pandemic, and they worked so hard on the social distancing and all the health um, requirements, etc. We had 150 people for each show. We did four sold out shows, you know, and, and to their credit, not a, everything was safe. Not a single case was traced to these things. The orchestra sounded gorgeous in that cathedral. And it was such a treat um, to get to do. And some people were like really emotionally uh, you know, moved because it, it was the first live music they'd seen since the pandemic started. And they were, they, these emotions were coming up that they didn't even know they were going expect to experience, you know? So it was, it was nice. Oh yeah. It's a great video. Again, if you want to learn more about Jeff's music, go to jeffstraker.com. Uh, you can get the information, obviously find him on social media as well. Lots of great shows coming up and Jeffrey, I just love the enthusiasm. That's just, <laughs> just really wonderful. Uh, so hopefully you'll get out and tour this album. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any other future plans you want to mention? I was curious as to what people are thinking of down the road. Well, yeah, I mean, I've got, I mean, once I do my virtual tour and my summer tour, then we're in the fall. And I mean, as you know, um, uh, I released some holiday music last year and I can't believe I'm already thinking of Christmas, but I am. And uh, last year I was meant to have a really, like, like a 14 date prairie holiday tour of all these soft seat theaters. Um, Cause I've kind of built up this 
prairie Christmas thing over here on the prairies. So we're really hoping we can do that this coming winter. I mean, we're only getting out of winter on the prairies. I'm staring out my window at a snowbank, but, but, but we hope that next winter <laughs> uh, that we can do this, this holiday tour. So people can maybe stay tuned for that if they're, you know, thinking Jingle Bell thoughts. And, and then in the new year, I mean, hopefully I'll, I'll be able to, by next spring of 22, do the tour of the Netherlands that I was supposed to do last fall that got cancelled due to the pandemic so uh there'll be a bit of catching up with missed dates um and then a whole bunch of writing of new songs and some interesting projects um uh so yeah it, it, there's it, there's never a dull moment here at, at jeff straker central <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great that is absolutely great it's been a wonderful pleasure to talk to you today we're going to finish with another one of my favorite songs from the new album remember the new album is called just before sunrise it lands on May the 7th. You'll be able to find it on the streaming platforms. You'll be able to uh, go to Jeffrey's website and pick up a physical copy. I'm assuming there'll be physical copies of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah, so lots of opportunities to get the album. We're going to play Morning Light, which I think was a song that you wrote uh, after your, your mother sadly passed. And I think, mm -hmm. uh, was this the song that kind of kicked off the, the writing for the album? It did. Yeah, yeah. These, this, this, the sort of some of the themes in it for sure. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the song itself. Well, it's a song that sort of speaks to, you know, so in, in a broad way, um, just wanting to make it make a difference. And, and with, with the time you have, and it, and it really sort of nods its head to the notion that the time we have here is in fact really precious and limited. And of course, a realization like that comes and clobbers you on the head in the wake of the passing of someone as close to you as your mom. You know, you you really get clobbered with this mortality idea, which isn't a bad, it's not a bad thing. It's just like, it's good to be cognizant of it, you know? And so the song speaks to wanting to make a difference, to matter and and do your best. Um, but also, you know, um, this is this is a fragile thing we have here, and uh, there's limited time to do that in. And so, you know, but but I hope it does it with with uh, with an optimistic light shone on it. And this is a song. This is one of those songs that you play with someone else because I think Scott Perry plays guitar on this for you. Yeah, I recorded this with Scott on acoustic guitar, and I, and I like that arrangement, I like the piano and the guitar playing off each other. Yeah, let's listen to that just now, Jeffrey Straker. It's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you today. This is Jeffrey Straker with Morning Light from his wonderful new album, Just Before Sunrise. You're listening to Folk Roots Radio, and I'm Jan Hall. And Jeff, that was an absolute pleasure. And I'm serious. If you're coming this way, I want to get on the garden course at least. You're on. <laughs> Staring at the stars, but I ain't Galileo. Tiny lights are strung upon crooked wires. One falls through the night. I make a wish, I hold it tight. Somewhere between what I know and what I need, we are hopes and we are dreams. Look a new love in the eye Suddenly I'm a teenage man And a kiss is the last song at a high school dance I fall for the first time once again I write our names in fresh cement Seeking to belong We are letting go We are holding on Yeah, and we promise and we confess All you can do is believe, I guess Chin high, we are just trying our best Oh, we are I lift my eyes to the clouds and I see drifts of snow And it's winter on the prairies I'm ten years old Castles and dragons to slay As youth was melting away Digging the riches of our souls 
We are silver, we are gold. Yeah, and we promise and we confess all you can do is believe, I guess. Chin high, we are just trying our best. Oh, we are. We dance and we sway and we know come what may We are floating like a feather on the breeze We are today, we are tomorrow We are breath, we are borrow Funny it takes a rear view mirror to see Yeah By the morning light, lying in my bed, voices in my head, the judge and jury. What's the point in waiting to follow through? Just do the things you want to do, like a beautiful sunrise at the dawn. We are here and then we're gone. Oh, we are the most beautiful sunrise at the dawn. We are here and then we're gone. That's Jeffrey Straker with the fabulous Morning Light from his new album. It's entitled uh, Just Before Sunrise. It's been an absolute pleasure having him join us today. Now, that is today's live stream. I have lots more live streams planned. You can visit me online at folkrootsradio.com. Uh, you'll be able to check out our radio episodes and our interviews, and you can listen on demand and a whole bunch of different places, as well as across our syndicated radio stations in Canada and also into the northern U.S. So lots of great uh, stuff happening. I also want to let you know that you should also check out the Sun Parlor Coffeehouse sessions, which are the video sessions that I do with Gary Glass. And uh, we have, I think, 60 sessions on the website. You can visit them at sunparlorsessions.com. And that's it for today. So stay safe and well, everybody. And I look forward to seeing you next time. You've been listening to Folk Roots Radio Live on Facebook and YouTube and our website at folkrootsradio.com. Take care.